Good morning. I'm really sorry I can't be with you in person, but I hope you enjoy this story that I have for you today. Now, I don't know about you, but I really love books. I love all kinds of stories, adventure stories, stories of battles and love stories, all sorts of different kinds of stories. And you know, my very favourite book, the book that I go back to time and time again, has all of those different kinds of stories in it. Stories that involve adventure, stories that involve love, stories that have battles and really important things happening in it. And you know, it's not just important to me, but it's important to lots and lots of people. Because you see, the book that I love the most is a book called the Bible. And it's really important to Christians all round the world. Now, there are also other types of stories as well, aren't there? There are stories that might be a little bit, well, scary. They might be scary for the, the people that are in the stories, or they might be scary for us that are reading them. But, you know, the best kind of scary stories are always the ones where things turn out all right at the end. Now, our story today is from the Bible. And now I know it just looks like I have four sticks, but hopefully I should be able to tell you this story from the Bible. Oh, one other thing I should mention. The other thing that I might do is I might use my four sticks to do something like this. So this is going to represent a gauge. So you might see a gauge on someone's car so they might show how much fuel the car has so it might go from here when it's full up to the middle when it's half full and it might go all the way over here and at this point the person that owns the car knows that they need to go and get petrol very very quickly or it might be a what's called a speedometer on the car as well and if it starts over here then they're going quite slowly or if it's in the middle they're going quite fast, but if it's over here, you know they're going really, really, really fast. But we'll come back to that in a bit. Now, our story starts with some people up on a hillside. And there was a very important person up on the hillside and his name began with a J. Now, if you think about it, some of you might know who it might be. So the person it is was Jesus. And Jesus was up on the hillside and he was talking to lots of people and he was telling them all about God up in heaven. Now, I don't know about you, but if, um, if a teacher I knew had lots and lots and lots of people the same way Jesus did coming to talk to them, you'd be really impressed, wouldn't you? Your teacher, your, your teacher might be amazing and you might think that they should have lots and lots of people coming to hear them as well, but there might not be enough room in your classroom for all of those people. But anyway, Jesus was a teacher and he was teaching people all about God up in heaven. And there were lots and lots of people on this hillside. But as the day went on, Jesus started to get a bit tired. And so he and his friends, the disciples, decided to go down from the hillside to go and find a boat on the side of the Sea of Galilee so that they could go sail across to the other side of the lake and tell people all about God up in heaven on the other side of the lake the next day. So the disciples and Jesus all went down from the hillside and they got into a boat and they started to sail across to the other side. Now, as I said, Jesus was feeling a bit uh, tired. And so he went and found something, maybe a cushion, something like that. He went to the back of the boat. Oh, sorry. He went to the back of the boat and he went to sleep. Now, the disciples saw that he was asleep. And I'm sure they would have said to each other, shh, be quiet, teacher is sleeping. So they left Jesus to sleep as they started to sail 
across to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And as they were going, the weather was good, the waves were gently lapping on the side of the boat, there wasn't a cloud in the sky, so they just kept sailing. And you know, if the disciples had had like one of those kind of gauges on their chests, then their gauge would have been about by here, because they weren't concerned, they weren't worried at all, because they knew, a lot of them were had been fishermen before, they knew that if they kept sailing, they would get to the other side of the Sea of Galilee and they would be absolutely fine. But as they kept sailing, well, they noticed something up in the sky. It was, it was a bit dark and, well, the clouds had started to gather and the waves that had been gently lapping on the side of the boat, well, they started to get a bit bigger and the wind that had just been gently pushing them along. Well, that started to get a bit stronger as well. And the disciples, well, panicometer, that kind of thing, started to rise just a little bit because, well, they were pretty good at sailing, but the weather was starting to turn a bit. It was starting to get a bit darker and a bit, well, not so nice. And you know, as they were doing this, Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat. And as they started to sail a bit further, the clouds started to get bigger and darker and there started to be some rain and the wind that had been gently pushing them along, well, that got a bit stronger and the waves that had been okay to begin with, well, those got even bigger and the, if the disciples had had a panic meter, well, that would have gone up a bit further because they started to get a bit more concerned and Jesus was, well, <sighs> asleep at the back of the boat. And as they kept going even further, well, the waves got even stronger, the clouds got even darker, the wind started to blow even harder, and in fact, there might have even been some lightning shoot out of the sky, and the disciples' panic meter started to rise much higher, and Jesus was asleep at the back of the boat. And it got to a point where their boat was being tossed all over the place, and if there had been a meter that was um, telling them how windy it was. Well, the windy, the meter for wind would have gone all the way over here saying, well, it's very, very windy. It might not be a good idea to be out in your boat right now. And if there had been a, a wave -o meter, well, that would have been all the way over here saying, the water is going to get into your boat. And if there was a sink -o meter on the boat, well, that would have been over here as well saying, this boat isn't going to last much longer. And the disciples panic -o meters would have started to tip over here. And as they, as this happened, as they got more and more scared as they were in this boat, they did something, one of them did something really important. They asked for help. But they did it in a kind of silly way, because you see, one of the disciples asked a question. And the question they asked was to Jesus. Now, if you were in a boat in the middle of a storm and you spoke to your teacher, they might not be able to help you very much, because they might be able to tell you how windy it is or how big the waves are or that kind of thing but they're not always the first person you think of to help you but one of the disciples asked Jesus a question the question that they asked Jesus was this by here they asked Jesus don't you care now that was a very silly question to ask Jesus now wasn't it because of course Jesus cared that's why he had been going to tell people all about God up in heaven. Jesus was telling people all about God up in heaven to tell them how much God loved them and in fact Jesus was going to show how much God loved people because you see not long after this story the Bible tells us Jesus was going to go and die on a cross not for anything that he had done wrong but the wrong things that other people had done because he loved them so so much, but we'll come back to that in a bit. So the disciple asked Jesus a question and it was a bit of a silly question, but they were in the middle of the storm and they were feeling very scared. Now I don't know about you, but if I feel scared, I know that the best thing to do is to go and ask for help. We might be feeling scared or anxious. If we had a panic meter on our chest, it might be rising all the way up over here. And the best thing to do when we feel like that is to ask for help. It 
might be your teachers or your mums or dads or it might even be someone like a fireman or a policeman or a policewoman or a firewoman those kind of people they might be exactly the right people to ask for help <clears throat> so the disciple asked Jesus for help and Jesus did something amazing Jesus stood up in the boat and he said stop now if your teacher had stood up in a boat in the middle of a storm and said stop you wouldn't expect anything to happen would you but you see when Jesus said stop the waves that had got so so big and the wind that had been blowing the boat so so hard and and the rain that had been coming down out of the sky so so much well it all stopped the waves went back to well gently lapping against the side of the boat the wind that had been blowing the boat round and round and here and there and everywhere well it calmed down and the great big dark clouds with all that rain and the lightning that had been coming they went away and the boat started to sail across gently to the other side of the lake again now the disciples panicometer that had been over here anyway well it went even further because they didn't expect for Jesus to stand up and to say to the wind and the wave stop and it to happen now you see the disciples also had a special book their book is kind of part of the Bible as we know it today they had the first kind of books that some of them were in the what we call the Old Testament and their book said that there was only one person that could tell the wind and the waves to stop and it would obey them obey him you see they believed that the only person that could do that was God up in heaven but if Jesus if he said stop and the wind and the waves obeyed him well they started to think they started to ask themselves a question did that mean that Jesus was well God up in heaven and you know Christians believe that he was and is that he is God up in heaven who came down to earth to live a perfect life to tell people all about God and how amazing he is and then as I said he was showing how much God loved people by going to die on a cross as I said not for anything that he had done wrong but for the wrong things that and the disciples had done wrong, the thing, wrong things that you and I have done wrong as well. And you see, he did that so that anyone that says they're sorry, puts their trust in him, can be friends with God up in heaven again. And you see, not only did Jesus <clears throat> die on a cross, but you see, the Bible tells us, and Christians believe, that well, after he died on the cross, they brought him down, they took him, <clears throat> to a tomb which was like a, a cave dug into the rock where they put bodies a bit like how we put bodies in graves now but they put it but Jesus's body in a tomb and they took a great big stone and they rolled it over the entrance but three days later when Jesus's friends came to see his body well they found that the stone had been rolled away and Jesus' body wasn't there anymore. Because you see, the Bible tells us that Jesus had come back to life to show how amazing God is and that God keeps his promises, that he loves people and he wants to help them too. And you see, the disciples learned something really important that day in the boat. They learned that when they needed to ask for help, a good person to ask was Jesus, because he could help them. And you know, the Bible tells us that if we need help, we can call out to different people as well. We can call out to our mums and dads and our teachers and other people as well. But also the Bible tells us we can call to God up in heaven to help us as well. Now, I'm going to finish this part of our assembly with a quiet prayer. So we're going to pop our hands together, we're going to close our eyes, I'm going to pray, which is just speaking to God, and I'm going to say Amen at the end. 
Dear God, thank you for all the wonderful stories in your Bible. Thank you for the story of Jesus calming the storm. And thank you that it teaches us that if we're scared or if we're panicking like the disciples were, we can ask for help. We can ask our mums and dads and our teachers, but we can also ask you for help as well. Amen.